a new satellite design, more MNO partners, and the formation of a first net alternative for Europe. These are just a few of the AST Space Mobile stories we'll cover in this video. Before we get into these news stories, let's take a look at the latest price targets for AST Space Mobile stock. In March, UBS upgraded their ASTS price target from $31 to $38. UBS weren't alone in upping their price target with Deutsche Bank also increasing its, adjusting it from $53 to $64. Scotia Bank also did an upgrade with its target now sitting at $47.90. We've also got a new name to add to the list this month, as Roth have initiated coverage of AST, setting the stock as a buy with a price target of $42 per share. The average price target for these analysts is $42.98, which gives the stock a lot of room for upwards growth. Let's take a look at the stock price action from March. The stock opened the month at $29.08, a few days later, AST held its earnings call, and in the days that followed, the stock climbed to highs of $35.49. These highs didn't last long though, with the stock quickly falling below $30 again. Lows of the month came on the final day of trading, when ASTS dipped to $22.22, before recovering slightly to close the month at $22.74. March was another weak month for the stock, and given the average price target is $42.98, the stock price action doesn't seem a fair reflection of the company's current and potential future value. AST has surprised analysts and investors by altering the design of its next satellite. In an STA filing with the FCC, AST detailed that its next satellite will have a 30 meter squared solar panel. Here is a design by technical expert Cat SE, showing what the satellite is expected to look like. This first Block 2 Bluebird is being referred to as Flight Model 1, or FM1 for short. FM1 will launch with the ISRO during Q2 of 2025. The launch is likely to be during the month of May, although neither the ISRO or AST have confirmed the exact date yet. Speaking of satellites, AST has confirmed that it now has 40 Block 2 Bluebirds in planning and production. Previously, the company had shared that it had 17 satellites in planning and production, so this is a big jump. AST Space Mobile needs just 45 satellites to provide a good level of coverage in the US, Europe and Japan, so with the 5 in orbit, these 40 in production will enable AST to hit that target. The company also shared that it expects to be completing 6 satellites per month by the second half of 2025. That's far earlier than we and many analysts had expected. AST now has 50 mobile network operator, or MNO, partners, giving it access to 3 billion subscribers around the world. By comparison, competitors Link and SpaceX's Starlink only have access to around 10% of that figure, with around 300 million potential subscribers shared between them. This demonstrates AST's clear dominance in the market, and it shows that its technology and approach is favoured by the majority of network operators. This was before AST announced its partnership with Two Degrees, later in the month. The New Zealand-based operator stated that it would be bringing broadband services to remote areas of the country from 2026 onwards in partnership with AST. In partnership with Vodafone, AST Space Mobile has established a jointly owned European satellite company, which will provide direct-to-device services to mobile operators across Europe. The company, named Satco, aims to provide 100% geographic cellular coverage to all of Europe giving AST access to many additional subscribers in markets where it does not yet have a network partner. Vodafone also plans to use AST services to support its new Mission Critical initiative, which will provide essential voice, data and video connectivity to emergency service teams across Europe. The initiative, which is similar to FirstNet in the US, will launch first in Germany, before a wider rollout. Mission Critical was announced by Vodafone at the Mobile World Congress conference, which was also attended by several members of the AST Space Mobile team. By prioritising emergency traffic and by utilising AST satellite services to close cellular dead spots, 
Vodafone's Mission Critical Initiative has the potential to save many lives. AST has confirmed that it plans to utilise all of the launch lots it had previously procured, including the optional additional capacity for a further 15 satellites. This means it'll launch at least 60 satellites with the ISRO, SpaceX and Blue Origin before the end of 2026. That's more than enough to provide excellent coverage to the world's most commercially attractive markets. In fact, AST believes it'll have 25 satellites in orbit this year enough for the company to start generating revenue. The FCC has approved all of AST Space Mobile's US gateway applications. Signals from AST's Bluebird satellites are picked up by these gateway receivers and then routed through the terrestrial networks. This approval is another important step needed for the company on its path to begin offering services in the United States. Ofcom, the UK's telecommunications regulator, has shared proposals to authorise the use of spectrum bands for the use of satellite-to-device technologies. Ofcom states that the operator would be responsible for ensuring that satellite services don't cause any harmful radio interference, which is similar to the standards set out by many other countries' regulatory bodies. The proposal, which was published on the 25th of March, is currently in a consultation period, which ends on the 20th of May, 2025. What do you make of these recent news items? And are there any stories we didn't cover that you think deserved some limelight? Drop us a comment to let us know. Don't forget you can support our work by subscribing to Connected Space.